As I ventured through the current tumult of political discourse, the air is thick with a kind of disillusionment found only in the corridors of power on the verge of promise fatigue. Labour, a party of resilience and aspirations, seems to be wavering under the immense weight of its own eco-pledge, leaving members and, quite possibly, the public teetering on the edge of hope and scepticism. Not long ago, it seemed a mighty show of conviction when Labour held out a promise, an annual 28 billion investment into green projects spanning up until the dawn of the next decade. One must admit, the numbers brim with ambition, a testament to a future where Britain stands as a beacon of sustainability. But as the conversation unfolded, the glimmer of that future began to dull. Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, tempered expectations, suggesting that the 28 billion might be more of a guiding star to steer towards during the latter half of an introductory parliament, should the winds of fate favour Labour. The retreat into such ambiguity strikes a chord of concern, for are promises not meant to be said with the intent of fulfilment, rather than as a shimmering mirage that retreats upon approach? The voices within the party convey a restless caution. One hears whispers of a ULES moment, the foreboding spectre of policies that rather than galvanising the populace, drive a wedge and instil resistance. There is a nuanced argument to be made that while ecological stewardship is paramount, its championing must be done in a manner that both embodies practicality and retains the support of the electorate. One wonders if the whispers speak of prudence or of the faint-heartedness of potential operational changes. Moreover, does not the argument that prioritising green investments could eclipse other social imperatives seem remiss? It presumes a zero-sum game where, in fact, the judicious nurturing of our environment is inextricably linked to the health of our society. A greener policy approach could fortify the NHS through a reduction in political-related ailments, bolster education by instilling principles of sustainability within our youth, and stem the brutal tide of housing inadequacies through energy-efficient infrastructure. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's rhetoric attempts to paint a picture of an inevitable tax hike should Labour's policy go forth, the kind of scaremongering targeted at fraying the nerves of a burdened populace. Their stance is simple. Labour's plan is but whimsy, an economic flight of fancy that would spell despair for families and businesses already bearing fiscal burden. But isn't there wisdom in the words of Labour's spokesperson? They talk of permanent cuts in bills, the creation of high-wage jobs, and an energy-secure Britain. The party stands its ground, pledging to maintain these high ambitions without further taxing the working Britain's purse. What often escapes conversation is the interconnectivity of our challenges and their solutions. The dialogue must move beyond mere pounds and fiscal scare tactics. A prosperous nation is not signified by solely its GDP, but by the welfare of its people, the sustainability of its growth, and its meaningful existence within the global ecological commons. Investing in green technology and infrastructure is not an isolated objective. It is the groundwork for an economy resilient in the face of climate challenge, and poised for a future where green industry and innovation are at the forefront. It allows for the nurturing of an economy equipped to deal with the dual needs of progress and preservation. It becomes clear then that the conversation needs to shift towards a collective understanding. This isn't about wooing voters with ethereal promises of pitting fundamental societal needs against the environmental imperative. It's about educating the populace on the natural alignment between ecological investment and social development. Labour's struggle to maintain its eco-pledge is symptomatic of a greater ailment, the challenge of instilling long-term vision within a political landscape, marred by short-termism and quick votes. It falls upon the shoulders of those who hold the ink and the airwaves to carve out the narrative that energies invested in our planet reap dividends in the well-being of our society. In the labyrinth of political strategy, it is the trapeze of balancing foresight with the expediency that often proves to be the most precarious. The fabric of any political pledge must be woven with threads of longevity and immediate relevance, lest it unravels under public scrutiny or becomes mired in the quicksand of political convenience. Labour's eco-pledge is at a crossroads, a juncture between holding firm to a vision of a green and equitable future and succumbing to the siren's call of electoral 
pragmatism. The architecture of such grand promises requires a foundation laid with care, articulated through a narrative that resonates with the layman's immediate concerns while guiding towards a horizon that glows not with utopic light, but with the feasible dawn of sustainable modernity. On the opposing benches, the conservatives chant a mantra of tax cuts and better future, elusive terms that flutter provocatively in the ears of the anxious electorate. Yet, is it not the familiar dirge of a past littered with singular pledges, pledges whose tangible benefits seem to have slipped through society's fingers like grains of sand? Their critique of Labour's unfunded spending spree is caustic, yet it crumbles upon deeper interrogation. What constitutes prudent spending, if not investment in the very foundations of a society's longevity? Should we play the music of immediacy so loud that it drowns out the rhythm of wisdom, echoing through the duty we have towards generations yet unborn? For Labour, retreating from such an ambitious eco-pledge may be an act of political triage, addressing feared vulnerabilities against the opposition attacks. Yet let us ponder the cost. Abandoning or diluting these green aspirations bears the risk of forsaking a moral compass in favour of a political navigational chart, a map that tends to favour the prevailing winds of current opinion polls and media narrative, weighing the concerns of essential sectors such as housing, healthcare and education does not necessitate the abandonment of ecological stewardship. Investment in the environment simultaneously manifests as solutions to these realms is not only possible but vital. Our disillusionment peaks not with the settling of a lofty goal, but with the stark diversion drawn unjustly so between the green future and the conventional societal priorities. It is an unjust binary that undermines the holistic vision required to catapult Britain into a vanguard role in the great ecological transition. Promises of utility build reductions, job creation, and national energy security carry with them the potential to galvanise public support if framed not as distant ideas, but as tangible, immediate steps towards a unified goal. To convince people that these aspirations are within reach, Labour must tie every pound pledged to the narrative of personal and collective betterment. Fiscal prudence is a term bandied about with abandon, occasionally as a cloak for austerity, at other times as a stick to beat out visionary policies. Yet, prudence is not inherently at odds with bold transformational agendas. The proposed £28 billion per year by Labour's accounting fits within rigorous fiscal rules intended to borrow only to invest, ensuring a trajectory where national debt trends downwards over the medium term. Cannot prudence exist in the balance between judicial investment and fiscal restraint? Perhaps the course to chart is not one of either or, but of a sophisticated fusion of both, investing where it catalyzes growth beyond the measure of expenditure and restraining where profligacy looms. Labour, if it is to maintain the sanctity and the attraction of its eco-pledge, must present it with a coherent framework where the green agenda dovetails seamlessly with the traditional buttress of their platform. This means envisioning homes that are not just buildings but sustainable living spaces that cut energy costs and reduce health risks. It means the NHS that operates with energy efficiency at its heart and a curriculum that prepares the next generation for a world that will demand environmental acumen. In this vision, each sector reinforces the other in a symphony of integrated goals, where green policy is not a standalone note, but the very harmonic on which the melody of progress plays. Treading the path of convincing reason requires an understanding of the interwoven nature of societal challenges and the opportunities presented by transformative policy. Encouraging the pursuit of an ambition like Labour's requires demonstrating how much investment not only addresses ecological concerns, but subsequently strengthens societal foundations and nourishes equitable growth. As we scrutinise Labour's commitment to its eco-pledge, let us embrace the discussion advocating for nuanced policy development that neither inflates hopes with impractical aspirations nor douses the flames of potentialities with cold pragmatism. Instead, let us argue for a Labour narrative that effectively intertwines the sustainability of our shared natural home with the very sinews of everyday life, emphasising the indispensable symbiosis of environmental stewardship and social well-being.
through persuasive reasoning, not shying away from complexities but weaving through them, we validate the credibility of a pledge that promises to steer Britain towards its responsible place in the new global order, an order where green investment and social priorities are not adversaries but allies in an ever-evolving dance towards a just and enduring flourishing. In the end, it is the fidelity to true leadership that is in question, leadership that looks beyond the immediate horizon that challenges the impatient tide of now and dares to reimagine a nation reconciled with both its populace and its place within the delicate balance of a global environment. The task for labour, should it choose to shoulder it, is no less than history's call to preemptive courage in face of unimaginable transformation. An enterprise neither for the faint of heart nor for those who mistake the machinations of politics for the beating heart of legacy. The viability of Labour's eco-pledge, and indeed of any pledge, lays therein. Will we lead with clear, convicted foresight, or will we trail in the shadows cast by the uncertainty of our own making? It seems the hope of true progress lies with the former, whilst the latter paves a much-trodden unremarkable path to a future wherein we echo what could have been rather than revel in what has become thank you for watching remember to like comment subscribe and share